We're now ready to move on to rotoscoping in Nuke. I've imported an image sequence that will be perfect for this. This features an actor hanging from a rope on a green screen stage. Now the green screen is not clean, there's all sorts of equipment in the way, plus the rope runs over the edge of stage where the green screen runs out. So what we can do with this footage is first rotoscope a garbage mask to get rid of all this extra equipment. The second thing we can do is rotoscope this rope to separate it out from the background. There are several nodes you can use to rotoscope in Nuke. We use the most basic one called Roto. Roto has been improved for version 7, so it's even easier to use now. I'm going to go back down to the node graph, right mouse button click, and choose Draw Roto. Once the Roto node appears, of course its properties are in the Properties panel, and also there's a special toolbar here at the left. And in fact, the third button here allows you to draw new masks. This will be special curves with points that will eventually affect the alpha of another node. Right now, let's set the Bezier. We're going to try that first. Once you have the tool selected, you simply have to click in the viewer. Each time you click, you get a point, and the mask shape starts to form. So I'll go around the actor and cut off things like tracking marks, shadows, and lights that I don't want. I'm going to stop short of the top of the green screen, and then in order to close it, click the very first point, and there we go. There's the first mask shape, and that's listed right here in the curve section of the properties panel. That's not working yet. What I need to do is hook the roto into another node through a mask input. So a quick way to do that here is to create a merge node. So I'm going to press the M key to get a merge node, then hook the A pipe into the read node, and hook the viewer into the merge node. Then I can grab the mask input at the right side of the merge node and drop it on the roto node. And there the mask starts to function. What's happening is the interior of the mask is converted to opaque alpha. Whatever is outside the mask is converted to transparent alpha. In fact, we can look at the mat by switching to the alpha view in the viewer. With your mouse in the viewer, just press the A key. There we go. Go back to RGB, press A again. Now that we have a mask, we can go ahead and animate it. And in fact, you'll get the first keyframe for free. I can go to a different frame like frame 1 and alter the mask. One way to do this is to click drag a marquee box around the entire mask and let go. You'll then get a transform handle. I can go ahead and move the entire mask over. As soon as I do that, I'll get a brand new keyframe in frame 1. You can also move individual points. To do that, you can click off the transform handle and then pick a point. Now, in order to select a point, you have to make sure you're on one of the selection tools. For example, up here at the left, select all. But then you can click on a mask point and then drag it to move it. So there are two keyframes. I'll go to frame 30 next and add one more. So there's our first rotoscope of the actor. Now we also mentioned saving the rope. What we can do there is draw a second mask that's much tighter that cuts the rope out. You can do that by simply going to one of these tools that allow you to draw a mask, like the Bezier, B-spline, or one of these shapes like a ellipse or a rectangle. I'm going to go back to Bezier for now. Now I can't really see the rope, so one trick is to temporarily disconnect the mask pipe. Now I can see everything. So with this tool selected, Bezier, I'll draw a new mask shape. And I'll close it. To see the result, I'll hook the mask pipe back up. There we go. I get the net result of both masks. Let's take a look at the alpha channel one more time. I'll press the A key, and there we can see the alpha mat. Once again, white is opaque and black is transparent. Each of these shapes is listed in the curve section, so the new one is Bezier 2. But notice that each one of these has a set of options beside it. For example, if I click on Bezier 1, there's an invert button. If I click this, the result's inverted. Beside that's an operation button. For example, if I go up to Bezier 2, double click that button, which looks like two little squares, I'll get a list of operations. And this affects how the masks are combined. So I can change it from over to say difference. Difference causes the overlapping area to become transparent. I'll return that to over just for now. And over is very similar to the mask add function inside After Effects. Now there are other ways to affect the quality of the mask aside from moving points. For example, if I zoom in and select one point on the rope, I can see there's a small line beside it. That's the feather. 
Once I see the feather line, I can click drag that and pull it outwards. And that becomes a softer transition from what's opaque to what's transparent. You can make a very large feather or a very small one. In this case, I'll make a small feather just to soften the edge of the rope. And this is per point. Now any feather is stored in the keyframe. So if I go to a different frame, I have the option to change the feather. Now I've gone back to frame one, so the first thing I need to do is go ahead and move the entire mask over, and then I can adjust the feathers. Now aside from the feather, you can also add or delete points. There's tools for this over at the left. Here's the Add Points tool. Just click on a mask line, like here. Or if I want to add to the first mask, I can select that mask, and then click on one of its lines. Now you notice that the new point has a tangent handle and it's smooth. There are actually two types of points inside Nuke. There's a smooth type, which I have here, or there's a cusp type, which I have over here, and that's the kind you get by default. You can switch between the two by going to one of the other tools. Up here to the left, there is a smooth points tool. I can click on a hard one and smooth it out like this. Once you have a smooth point, you can go back to the select tool and then alter the tangent handles. It's also a cusp tool. We can change a smooth one back to cusp like this. Might have to click more than one time to go back to the linear version. You can also delete points. If you just select a point, you can delete it with the delete key. Or there is also a remove points tool. So there is some basic rotoscoping using the roto node. I do want to mention the Roto Paint node. The Roto Paint node builds upon the Roto node by using its rotoscoping functionality, but also adds an entire set of paint tools that allows you to paint with a stroke-based brush. This is great for making paint fixes right in the program, so it's worth checking out. Since we're working with green screen, the next step will be to move on to some of the chroma key tools inside Nuke, and we'll talk about that in the next video.